So last time we dealt with the table of values and graph of inverse variation and translated those in into an equation. So please be reminded of these equations when dealing with inverse variation. So we have y is equal to k over x, which is equivalent to the statement y varies inversely as x and its constant is determined by multiplying x and y. Let's have a review of how we translated um, table of values and graph into an equation. So given this graph, okay, we are going to make use of this point, given point here, to determine the value of k. But actually, we can make use of any of the points here, okay, to determine k. So we have k is equal to x times y. So we have our... Uh, x value here, or x coordinate is 7, and our y is 1, okay? So simply multiply 7 and 1, thus our k is equal to 7. Then we can now write the equation of variation, which is y is equal to k over x, replacing k with 7, so we have now y is equal to 7 over x. How about this given table of values? Okay, first is we are going to look into the movement of x and y here. So we have for x, 18 going to 9. So we have the values of x are decreasing. How about y? Okay, it's increasing. So let's solve for the constant k, okay, to really establish that this is really a... Uh, a model of inverse variation. So we have 18 times 0 0.167 is 3. 15 times 0 0.2 is 3. 12 times 0 0.25 is 3. And 9 times 0 0.333 is 3. Then we can now write the equation of variation, which is y is equal to 3 over x. Then the question is, why do we need to translate this into an equation? An equation is very helpful when you are asked to solve for a bigger value of x. Say for x is equal to 150. Would it be practical to continue this table of values just to, to find out the value, of x, the value of y when x is 150? Of course not. Okay? So this is the advantage of having an equation. Now, for this period... We are going to deal with, again with inverse variation, but with mathematical, solving mathematical and real-world problems. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we have the learning target. I can solve problems involving inverse variation. Okay? So, for our preliminary practice, okay, or activity, we have here, write the equation of variation for each situation. Okay? I will be guiding you in translating each. So for item number one, let's read it first. The time it takes to finish the job varies inversely as the number of men working M. Okay? So let's, let's make use of this and this. Now item number one is very easy. The time T varies inversely as the number of men working. How about in number two? Notice that we have three, three variables involved. So we have the area A of the base of the cylinder whose volume V is constant. So this is now the constant. So instead of writing K, we write here V. Okay, equals V. So the area A of the base of the cylinder whose volume V varies inversely as its altitude. Next, for item number three. The volume, the volume of a confined gas, see the volume V of a confined gas is related to the pressure P at a constant temperature P, T. So, instead of uh, writing K, you write here T as the constant. So, the volume V varies inversely to the pressure P. And lastly, we have given a constant voltage V. So the constant is V. So instead of writing K, you write here V. The electric current E varies inversely as the resistance R. Okay, that's it. 
So in solving worded problem, we have to to know how to translate the situation into an equation, just like what we did in direct variation. Let's have here um, problem, a mathematical problem. Okay, solve for the unknown variable. So we have here if y varies inversely as x. Okay, so we are going to translate this into an equation. Okay, y varies inversely as x. So write the equation as stated in the problem. Then find the constant k by substituting the, the first set of given values. When y is equal to 9, substitute. When k is equal to 2, so to get the constant, we multiply them. So you have 9 times 2 is equal to 18 equals k. Then step 3, we go back to equation 1. To write the equation of variation, we have y now is equal to 18 over x. Then, find y, okay? To find y, substitute the second set of values, okay? Find y. y is unknown, just copy it. Uh, copy the constant 18. And then we have x is equal to 3. So, y now is equal to 6. Or, we can make use of this equation x sub 1, y sub 1 is equal to x sub 2 times y sub 2, wherein this is our y sub 1, this is our x sub 1, this is y sub 2, and this is our x sub 2. Our x sub 1 here is 2 times 9, our y sub 1, x sub 2 is 3, then our y sub 2 is unknown. So 2 times 9 is equal to 18, you have 3 times y sub 2, Dividing both sides by 3, okay, the answer is the same. So, y is equal to 6 when x is equal to 3. We arrive at the same answer, okay? Okay, next problem. I want you to answer this for 2 minutes. I think you can do it for 2 minutes. You can make use of a calculator to aid in solving. Actually, is found on page 221 of your book, uh, activity number 12, okay? So, I'll be giving you two minutes to solve this, pause the video for a while, and then play it afterwards. Let's check. So, read the problem. If y is inversely proportional to x, so step one is, you're going to translate it into an equation. So, we have y varies inversely or proportional to x. Then, to find the constant, substitute the first set of values of the equations. So when y is equal to 24, then we have x is equal to 6. So, we have here 24 times 6 is equal to 144. Okay? Then, we go back to step 1. To write the equation of variation, so we have 144, 144k. Okay, nawala. So, let's repeat it. Okay, so we have y, okay, over x. Then we substitute. Then we have y is equal to 24. Then k over 6, then multiply. So, you have 144 is equal to k. We go back to equation number 1. So, we have y is equal to 144 over x, okay? Then, find the constant of variation, okay? We're done with it, okay? Then, find the value of y when x is equal to 8. So, we make use of this equation to solve for the value of y. Just write y because it's unknown. We have 144 over 8, which is equal to 18, Okay, or we can make use of this equation, x sub 1 times y sub 1 is equal to x sub 2 times y sub 2. So our x sub 1 is here, this is our y sub 1, y sub 2, x sub 1. So we have our x sub 1 is 6 times y sub 1 is 24. Then x sub 2 is 8, then y sub 2 is unknown. So we have 6 times 24 is 144 equals a times y sub 2. Then to determine y, divide both sides by 8. 
So we have y sub 2 now is still 18. We arrive at the same value of y. Now, it's time for you to answer it independently in your book. Okay? So, this will be recorded. Okay? This will be passed for checking and recording. Okay? So, do it now. You may solve it for maybe uh, less than 10 minutes. Okay? So I'll just move on with the with the next problem. We'll be dealing with real world problems. Okay. So let's read. In kickboxing, it is found out that force F. Okay. Translate this into an equation. F needed to break a board varies inversely as the length of the board. If it takes 5 pounds of pressure, okay, 5 pounds of pressure to break, 5 pounds of pressure 5, okay, to break a board 2 feet long, okay, so let's solve for K. So you have 5 times 2 is 10, is equal to K. Then we go back here. We have F now is equal to 10 over L. How many pounds, that is force, okay, pounds of pressure, okay, F, is needed, you have 10, to break a board that is 6 feet long. Okay, so F now is equal to 10 divided by 6, so we have... 1.67 okay so we need we need how many pounds of pressure we need 1.67 pounds of pressure to break a board that is six feet long okay for checking and recording we are going to answer activity number 13 of your work text Okay, that's found on page 223. Okay, so I hope you can answer this correctly and you can conf confidently say to yourself, I can solve problems involving inverse variation. Okay, so see you then in our next lesson.